best thing about this hobby is not this horrible lighting, these random posters, or this ugly mug. It's that just any of us can find really valuable coins right in our pocket change. A few years back, I would have thought you were lying to me if you said a penny or a quarter from only a few years ago could be worth like 10, 20 bucks. And now fast forward to today, I have a ton of coins I've found in my pocket change uh, that are right in my collection and are worth a ton of money over face value. So I thought it might be helpful to make this video about 20 coins that are all worth pretty good money that you can actually find in your pocket change, in circulation, or while you're coin roll hunting. At number 20, the 1967 Washington Quarter. 1967 quarter errors have a large variety from curved clips to struck on wrong denominations to more standard errors like double dies. There are many instances of this coin being struck on mismatched planchets with dozens of examples of this error being sold at auction. Other 1967 Washington quarters to look for are the no mint mark, no D or S coins in 1967, and a variety of other errors. There was a ton of these minted, so a normal average condition 1967 Washington quarter usually runs about 80 cents, but high grade ones can run around $25. At number 19, the 1986 D Jefferson nickel. When looking and evaluating your Jefferson nickel, full steps is going to be the standard when looking at the reverse of the coin, all lines present should be clean and tidy, and this is what you're looking for when buying or selling one of these coins. A 1986D Jefferson nickel has a little bit of a wide variety of worth, with an average condition coin being around its face value of five cents, when a closer to mint state condition coin can bring as much as $26 at auction. At number 18, the 2002 Lincoln Penny. This is definitely one you can find in your pocket change, generally in low circulated grade. These pennies can sell for about a face value of one penny. However, a high grade or mint state copy of this coin can be worth around $27. At number 17, the 2002 D Lincoln Penny. From the same series as the previous coin, and with a normal average condition circulated value of one cent or face value, one of these 2002 D Lincoln pennies can be worth close to $31 if in higher grade or close to mint state. You should look at the accents on the face and hair of Lincoln, and this will help with conditioning your coin. At number 16, the 1975 D Lincoln penny. We're getting a little bit older in age here with the 1975 D Lincoln cent, but usually these are only worth about their face value of one cent, while one in slightly above average condition could fetch around 25 cents. Now most collectors are looking for certified mint state coins to add to their collections, so ones with really high grade or close to mint state grade will fetch a value of close to 31 or 32 dollars. At number 15, the 1975D Roosevelt Dime. This is another one of those coins you can definitely find in pocket change. So if you found a 1975 dime, you should definitely pay attention to this part of the video. These coins are worth on average 65 cents, but can be worth more or less depending upon the condition of the coin. Numismatists in general or collectors are willing to pay an upwards of $30 per 1965 D dime if the coin has been graded high end mint state and is certified. On the other end of the spectrum, there is still good circulation 1975 D dimes that sell for around 15 cents. Common errors to look for are going to be off-center strikes. At number 14, the 1987P Kennedy Half Dollar. With a normal average condition, these are worth around face value of 50 cents, while one in high grade or closer to mint state grade can sell for around $30. The 1987 P Kennedy half dollar was not intended for circulation, meaning it was never meant to be used as money. These coins were included in sets and souvenir packages upon their release. 
At number 13, the 1977 D. Kennedy half. This is another Kennedy half that you can coin roll hunt for and is generally worth an average condition around 50 cents. But in higher grade or close to mint state, these can be closer to 30 or 35 dollars. There are known errors on these 1977 D. Kennedy half dollars, including double dies and off center strikes. At number 12, the 1977 Kennedy half. So from the same year as the previous coin, this 1977 Kennedy half is usually worth around the face value of 50 cents in average condition, but can usually be seen selling for around $35 when in higher grade. There's no silver content and no mint mark on the 1977 P half dollar, so keep this in mind. Number 11, the 1968 Washington Quarter. Of course, you see quarters all the time, so you want to keep an eye out for a 1968. Normally, these are worth face value of 25 cents, but one in mint state or close to mint state condition can usually sell for around $30. There is no mint mark on the 1968 Philadelphia minted quarters. These coins have zero silver content, and only quarters minted before 1965 contain any of the precious metals. Around 63% of all quarters minted in 1968 were minted at the Philadelphia Mint. At number 10, the 1980p Jefferson Nickel. These are normally worth around face value of 5 cents, but a higher grade coin can be worth around 33 to 36 dollars. There's a lot of different errors known on Jefferson Nickels and on these 1980p Nickels, Again, on nickels, you'll want to look for full steps when looking at the reverse of the coin, where all lines present are clean. This will indicate you have a higher condition coin with a cleaner imprint. Off-center strikes and double dies are one of the common errors that you can find across all of Jefferson nickels. At number 9, the 1966 Washington Quarter. With an average condition value of 25 cents or face value, these coins are pretty common. However, one in higher grade condition can be worth around $33. These are another coin that does not have any silver content, but double dies are a common error known both on the obverse and reverse of these 1966 quarters, which are made of 91% copper, and 9% nickel. The mint ceased minting of silver quarters in 1964. Other prolific 1966 quarter errors are double die reverses, multi strikes, struck on nickel planchets, struck on dime planchets, and struck through errors. At number 8, the 2006 D Lincoln Penny. These have an average condition value of 1 cent, but one in high grade condition can be worth close to $40. There was a ton of these pennies minted, and 2006 D Lincoln pennies can definitely come up in your pocket change. There are a ton of different errors known for these coins as well, which are also seen across other US coinage, like double dies and multi strikes. At number 7, the 1983 D Washington Quarter. These quarters have a normal value of around 25 cents in average condition, but a 1983 D Washington Quarter can be worth an upwards of $35. You'll want to look for the mint mark on the Washington Quarter on the front or obverse of the coin. If you are looking for 1983 quarter errors, be sure to look for broad strike errors. There are a variety of broad strike errors to be found throughout this year of quarter. Also look for double strike errors, and remember that these are really popular amongst collectors. At number 6, the 1982 P. Washington Quarter. These are usually worth 25 cents or face value, but in high grade can usually sell for between $35 and $42. There is a ton of errors known, as mentioned with the previous coin, and all of those errors can be found on this year of Washington Quarter as well. Some of these coins have sold for thousands of dollars in auction with various double die errors. At number 5, the 1987D Kennedy half. These coins are usually worth in average condition around 50 cents, but higher grade or close to mint state condition coins can be worth close to $40. The 1987D Kennedy half dollar was not intended for circulation, 
so it was not meant to be used as money. These coins were included in sets and souvenir packages, and these coins were issued in extremely low numbers with only 2.8 million of them produced. At number 4, the 1969 Washington Quarter. These coins are usually worth their face value of 25 cents in average condition, but a high-grade coin can be worth an upwards of $40. These coins do have 0% silver, but a lot of different errors can be found on these coins and have sold for thousands of dollars at auction. Some of these errors include off-center strikes, clip planchets, fragments, and wrong planchet errors to include double dies as well. The most prolific of these errors is a double die obverse. Number 3, the 1982 Lincoln Penny. These pennies are worth quite a bit more than many other Lincoln pennies, and they have an average value of around $5.50, but one well-worn beyond recognition would be worth only its face value of one cent. Many collectors love Lincoln cents, and one in high grade is worth an upwards of $45 or $50. These coins have roughly four varieties, small and large date, and copper and zinc versions. For a better price breakdown, check out my website, VarietyAirs.com. There was a ton of coins for 1982 Lincoln cents that were minted, so these can come up in pocket change regularly. The various varieties are the large and small date copper P, large and small date zinc P, as well as large D coppers and large and small D zinc pennies. 1982 D small date coppers are the most valuable of 1982 pennies. At number two, the 1971 Kennedy half. This is a really valuable coin that you can especially coin roll hunt for. These 1971 Kennedy half dollars are usually worth around 65 cents, but can be in upwards of 45 to 55 dollars in really good condition. There are double die obverse and double die reverse errors known on these. Also known errors are the nickel jacket over copper core error, and these coins have also been known to have 40% silver errors amongst them. This was the first year that the US Mint issued Kennedy half dollars in a non-silver state, and some of them slipped into production. Anything after 1970 contains no silver, with the exception of a few errors. These coins are a copper-nickel composition, being a nickel jacket over a copper core. Errors include obverse die breaks, struck on nickel planchets, and the double dies I mentioned before. At number one, the 1983 P. Washington Quarter. Now, in lower grade condition, these are going to be worth their face value of 25 cents, and there was a ton of these quarters minted. In higher grade condition, these coins can garner almost $60 when you go to sell them. You'll want to look for the mint mark on the Washington quarter on the front or obverse of the coin. If you are looking for 1983 quarter errors, be sure to look for broad strikes. There's a variety of broad strike errors to be found in this year, also look for 1983 double strike errors because those are super valuable as well. Another prolific error for the 1983 Washington quarter is a double die obverse that is worth well over $100. Let me know what you think about the top 20 most valuable coins in circulation. You'll definitely want to look for these. Save this video so that way you can look back at it and it can be the only video you really need for the next while until I update you again on coins to look for in your pocket change. Let me know what you've come across in your coin and banknote searches in the comments below as well. I will see you there and I will see you in the next video. Peace out guys.